Epilogue August is hot and humid. On one side of the main entrance of the building, clusters of dahlias slouch from their long stems, red and purple heads heavy from the heat. On the other side, a new wrought iron bench has been bolted to the cement. Several of the more conservative board members and parents voted against any ostentatious display. They settled on a bronze plaque in the shape of a dove and a a simple inscription, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah and to Him we shall, and to Him shall we return. Inside the car, Afaf hesitates for a moment, gripping the door handle. You do not have to go back, not right away, Bilal tells her, is squeezing her hand. He insisted on driving her this morning. Let someone else run the school for a year. Afaf rubs the grain whiskers of Bilal's beard. Her husband is not the same man she married. He looks unsettled, his eyes full of fright if she leaves the room for a moment. He's no longer the father who countered at her every fear and worry with hope and optimism. It had taken weeks for him to to finally let Asmia go to California. I'll be home for Thanksgiving, inshallah, Asmia told them, the last of her boxes arranged on her side of the dormitory room. Her Sudanese-American roommate had smiled reassuringly at them. Bilal wept on the drive home. She remembers Sister Nabiha's words to so long ago, women can withstand more than men. Afaf isn't the same woman either. Everyone's moving on, she tells Bilal. She still carries fear, though it's stuck behind a wall of invulnerability. It's not courage, but resignation. She survived the worst thing imaginable. She could go on with her life. Once a week, she calls Mama and detects an unfamiliar joy in her mother's voice. Did not the Prophet say, Heaven lies under the feet of your mother? Afaf walks to the main entrance of the school and sees the lock on the door has been replaced with a new security apparatus. She presses a button and a young woman buzzes her in. Her assistant, Sabah, isn't coming back for the new semester. Two Two teachers had immediately resigned. Ahlan, Miss Affaf, mashallah, you look well. The woman embraces Affaf. She wears an amber-colored abaya and tiny pearls dot her beige headscarf. I am Yasmin, your new assistant. She holds out a plastic fob. That's your temporary key until we get you settled again. She gestures to Affaf. Let's get you to your office. How strange to be managed by someone so young, but Afaf follows Yasmin down the corridor as though it's her first time in this building. A lifetime ago, Afaf had entered the school a young, idealistic teacher. Nuruddin had felt like home for the first time in her career. Then she became its principal, crafting a new legacy of progressive education for young women. Would that be forever marred by that fateful day last winter? The blood of 15 Muslimat had been washed away and walls had been painted over, window panes replaced, but a tremor still pulsated beneath Afab's feet as she walked down the corridor. Did her new assistant feel it too? Mr. Abbas has been using your office, Yasmin tells her. He'll be here later later to catch you up. Afaf nods, listens. Her office appears unchanged except for a messy desk. The interim principal is not as tidy as she. Can I bring you some tea, Miss Afaf? The young woman stands in the doorway, waiting. Afaf shakes her head, smiles at her new assistant. Thank you, I'm fine. She pulls out her leather chair and sits down. Let me know if you need anything. Yasmin closes the door behind her. Her cell phone buzzes. Everything is okay? She texts Bilal back. Alhamdulillah. 
Don't worry about me. She fights hard against the urge to call him to take her home. There's something she needs to do. I'll be right back, she tells Yasmin. Her assistant stands at, stands at her desk and looks like she'll follow Afaf. Instead, the young woman only nods. The corridor is quiet. Afaf turns at the end of it and walks past the cafeteria. A banner hangs from the ceiling, the printed names of the deceased and signatures of support punctuated with hearts and crescent moons. Afaf doesn't stop to read them, turns at the next corner. She stops in front of the confessional and runs her fingertips along the wooden lattice. Her shoulders tremble as she turns the small doorknob and enters. The lamp table and chair are gone, her prayer rug too. The space seems oddly smaller in its bareness. The walls have been repainted, a dull eggshell. Boxes of textbooks line one wall. She looks up at the vent in the ceiling, and tears fall into the hem of her hijab. Afaf turns around toward the back of the door. The mural has been painted over. She runs her fingers over this new coat of paint where Mary had once gazed into the face of an angel. It's smooth against her touch, and there are no traces of what had come before.